live. All right, we figured technical difficulties, and now we're back. So, but uh, there's there's a story of a newly wedded couple, and of course you've probably heard me talk about this. And and um, the wife makes ham for dinner, and the husband asks her because she cut the ends of the ham off and cooked everything in the pan, and, and he asks her, "Why did you cut the ends of the ham off?" And she said, "Well, I don't know. That's just how my mom did it." And so he was curious, and he called his mother-in-law and said, so when you cook a ham, why do you cut the ends of the ham off? And she says, well, I don't know. That's what my mom did. And so again, being curious, he calls the grandmother and says, so when you cook a ham, why do you cut the ends of the ham off? And she said, well, the reason I cut the ends of the ham off was because my pan wasn't big enough to fit the full ham. So now people are, you know, the generations are cutting it, the ends of the ham off just because they didn't understand why it was being done. They just, this was how they cooked a ham. They didn't understand the how, the, the why behind it. So, so today we're going to be talking about how and why of the beauty industry, specifically to some of the key performance indicators. Because uh, what I see as I go out and visit salons is that uh, people are doing great work and they're working hard, uh, but they skip a lot of the business uh, steps and they don't truly have an understanding. Not everybody, but enough people that we definitely want to get the word out and have, have better business practices, and that's what we want for you. But if we look at how and why, so this is a picture uh, in Portland, Oregon, and those of you that are live can't see it, but if you want to see it, I'll send it to you. Uh, and this is at Voodoo Donuts. Has anyone heard of Voodoo Donuts? Yeah, I used to think Voodoo Donuts was cool. I, I don't like Voodoo Donuts anymore. I think they suck. I had a terrible customer experience. They've gotten a big head, and so now they hate. They, if they see this, they're probably going to sue me, but go ahead. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's fried dough with sugar on it. But if you go there, that being said, you're going to wait an hour to get some donuts. Okay? So they definitely, at one point in my opinion, not so much anymore, so by saying in my opinion, I can slander them. Uh, uh, anyway, if you really want to go have a great experience in Portland, go to Salt and Straw. That is a company that you'll still have over an hour wait, and it's just getting ice cream. Uh, but talk about a client experience, and I hope that, that they always maintain why the clients come. It's not just because of the high quality of their, of their product, but it is an experience when you go in. And it used to be that way at Voodoo Donuts, but not so much anymore in my opinion. So, but here it is. I'm at the halfway mark. The, the line actually goes all the way back, and it's, again, it's just getting donuts. So they understand, these companies uh, understand how to make their product and why the people come. So it's not just that they're making product, they're, they're actually, uh, uh, they're, there's a, a philosophy behind it that engages the client, that creates this buzz that will uh, now will cause someone to wait an hour in line for uh, a pretty simple product. But the how explains the manner that we do something. The why explains the reason, the vision, the cause, uh, all that. And so it's important for you to know not just your why, why you're in the beauty industry, but it's, it's how do I do what I need to do, but, but definitely uh, the why is the driving factor and always needs to be known. There are jobs out there that they will train you on the how only and they don't care about the why. And you don't want to be that because basically you're a trained monkey at that point. So anyway, this, my, my, high, my recommendation is to really be focused on why you're doing what you're doing, because as you do that, you're going to create a better client experience. So if we look at uh, rebooking, which to me is the most important business step you're ever going to do. At the end of the appointment, we schedule another appointment. We don't let them go out. Um, this, uh, this step is ensuring the client's coming back to you. It's also putting them on a maintenance program that gets them into you with more frequency uh, so that they, they look Better. So when you go to rebook someone, how do you do it? Anybody want to share? How, how do you rebook somebody? I just tell them, okay, so I'll see you in six weeks. Yeah. Don't give them I don't give them an option. I'm like, okay, I'll just see you in six weeks. We'll schedule your appointment today. And I tell the front desk, okay, she scheduled an appointment for six weeks. Yeah. So you're, you have the, the luxury right now as a student of having a front desk person help you with that. As you get out in the real world, you're going to be the one doing that, which I think with that mentality, you'll get it done. I believe that this pr process starts during the consultation, though. So as you're doing the consultation with the client, you should be setting the expectation of when they should be back in. You are the professional. You need to be the one to have them 
uh, or, or start to educate them on that. Okay, so how we do it is we start to say, hey, uh, I'm getting busy, I need to see you in X amount of weeks, and again, I believe we do that during the consultation and at the final step, okay? Why we do it, why do you think we want to rebook the client? More money in our pocket. Okay, so it is going to make us more money. Let's look at from the client standpoint. Or if we keep them, better. yeah, they're going to look better all the time, okay? So, uh, you know, I go into my barber every three weeks. I mean, I'm ugly, but at least my hair looks good and it keeps my beard trimmed, right? <laughs> uh, so, what rebooking is doing, why we're doing it is, it, it, it's doing a lot actually, uh, but the, the why is it's best for the client. It's best for the client to be on this maintenance program that allows them to look their best all the time. Okay, the other uh, parts of it is you will need fewer clients to manage if you rebook your clients because you're getting clients in with more frequency. You're seeing them more times during the year. They're filling up your book. Uh, there's the three factors for you to figure out how many clients you need to be busy all the time. <laughs> Uh, it's how many days a week you want to work and how many clients you want to see in a day. And then the third one is how, uh, 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 how frequently they come back in. And we times those numbers together and it spits out a bigger number which tells us this is how many clients we need. So if I want to see five clients a day and I work five days a week and my clients come in every five weeks, that's times five by five by five, that's 125 clients that you're going to need to be consistently busy. If you're not rebooking, then that number is going to go up and you're going to have to manage more people. It, by not rebooking, um, we actually will create more work for ourselves. So when a client does show up after we haven't scheduled their next appointment, then now I'm going to spend more time with that client and, and use more product. So I'm going to have to work longer hours to see those five clients and I'm going to use more product on them, which increases my, decreases my efficiency and increases my overhead. So, so always have the client's need at, at the driving force. So the number one reason why I rebook is that it makes my client look the best that they can look between appointments, okay? But in addition to that, it's I need fewer clients that I have to manage. I, my, I'm, it's not that I'm doing less work, but, but at the same time you are. You're using less product and less time if you're maintaining their look versus having to recreate it every single time. Rebooking is hard. Is that a fair statement? When I say to the client, hey, I want to see you in six weeks, what tends to be their response? I don't know my schedule. Okay, that, That'll be, yeah, let me call you. And, and, I'll, and this is where you're going to have to get better as you go. And, and I believe that you should be rebooking 60% of your clients uh, or, or better. But 60% should be at least, uh, if you're not at 60%, that's what you should be targeting. So uh, um, it is... By, by doing that, uh, now I lost my train of thought. You see, I'm old and I need things like spelled out for me. And what was I saying, Trish? Anyway, uh, come on, Trish, you got my... Oh, there are when you rebook and then... Uh, oh, if they, said... well, if they don't rebook, so, so the, yeah. the, the now, now I'm back. I, you know, I had a moment of, I don't know, I hate to say Alzheimer's, but that's, uh, that's probably where it's going. Uh, but it's hard, and they don't want to rebook. They don't want to commit, but they do. People want structure in their lives. Uh, the, the, this is the crazy thing. If they have a dog, they're more likely to rebook their dog's appointment than they are their own. There are people who, uh, yeah, see? There are people whose lives revolve around their dog's grooming appointment, and, and they need to take that same uh, thing into their own life. So, uh, but it, it is, it, when they say, I don't know my schedule, your response needs to be, you need to push back slightly. We can't be aggressive and argumentative with the client, but the more, the better relationship that you build with them, the, the, the more that you can tell them, hey, that's, no, we're gonna do it this way, you know? Uh, because it, it, when they say, ah, I don't know my schedule, they're, they're, they, they may not realize it, but they're lying to you. They probably don't realize it. Very neat. So I have a friend, and she told me the best way to do it is like when you're rebooking, say, does like Tuesday this day work or Thursday that day yeah. or whatever. And then they are like, oh, I don't know. And then, well, how about we put you on Thursday? And then if that doesn't work for you, I need you to let me know within like yeah. 48 hours prior to that date. But like, yeah. basically, like it's already booked, so write it down and I'll see you then, or you need to call me and we'll. Yeah. So, so there's some great old school books by Napoleon Hill. 
uh, how to win friends and influence people. I like it to call it how to win friends and manipulate people. Uh, but, it's, but it's very old school, but it's very true. So what you're saying is, okay, uh, is Tuesday work or does Thursday work? So they call it the either or close, right? And, so, and, I, and I agree with that. But I also believe that if whatever day that they're there and whatever time that they're there, they can be there every day of the week. So if it's a Wednesday at 9 a.m., I believe every Wednesday at 9 a.m. they can be there because we are creatures of habit. Okay? And, and so anyway, if, if you're seeing that clients aren't rebooking, it's something that you're going to need to get better at. And that's, that's just how you have to put it. Uh, you're going to have to get over whatever it is because sometimes we create the issue. In our head, we think, oh, they're not going to rebook. Okay, they're not going to rebook because that's in your head. Or you think, oh, this is so pushy, I don't like doing this. Well, you're, you're the one creating the issue. This is about the client. The client needs to look their best, and the way that they look their best is to rebook their appointments. Okay, this one step will get you, uh, typically, if you have a full book, and, it, and again, depending on how many clients you have, uh, it's, it's typically two more appointments per client per year. So if you have 100 clients, that's 200 more appointments in a year that you're, you stand to make. If your average ticket price is $100, that's $10,000. So it's usually a, a, a $10,000 to, to $60,000 more in revenue that you stand to make, all because of the fact that you're willing to push back a little bit when they say, oh, I don't know my schedule. And, and it is. This is one of the things that if your clients aren't rebooking, they're not the right clients. You, you need clients that are going to rebook. And, and this is the one step that, to me, uh, when I do consult, consulting with people, this is where we start. We don't start with retail and we don't start with upsell. We don't start with things that, that they see impacting the monetary value of each ticket. We start with rebooking. And when they get to 60% rebook, then we'll move on. Because this is the most important business step that you're going to do. Okay. And anyway, uh, these are my nephews. Uh, and you can see one, one rebooks and he's all smiley with curly hair and one doesn't and he's angry and got a buzzed head that his dad got. So anyway. Okay, um, recommend product. I call it recommend product because when I use retail, it causes some people to clench a little bit. Like, oh, I got a retail. Uh, yeah, you, you are commission salespeople. And oh man, people hate it when I say that. Like commission salespeople is a bad, bad word or something. You know, it's not, it's a good thing. Commission, salespeople make the world go round. They educate the consumer, and then the consumer makes a decision. But uh, I see this regularly when I visit salons that uh, specifically in uh, booth rents uh, situations. So your Phoenixes of the world, your, your uh, Solas of the world, those are, those are good places to work. It's not that I'm bashing them, but what I see inside of those facilities is poor business practices. And one of the business practices that I see regularly is that Stylists do not carry product to retail to their clients, okay? Um, you need to have product. You don't need to carry a whole line, but you need to have product that you yourself are using, that you believe in, and that you can make a recommendation to them. So how we recommend product, where, does, where do you think the recommendation of product starts? During the service. Yeah, That's during the service. Good. And I'll, I'll even back it up so I agree to the consultation, okay? So that's the service, I'm with you, you're, you're, you're spot on. But within the, the service, I believe the consultation is where a lot of these things are going to start to manifest. So you're, uh, during a consultation, we get to look at the client and look at their needs, look at everything they, that, that they're going to want, uh, where we start talking about rebooking. Now I'm going to talk about product with them. Take that time to ask them what they're using. Um, or if they're using the products that, that, you, uh, that we retail here, then ask them how they like that product. Because if they don't like that product, we'll take that product back. Bring it back. I'll give you your money back, okay? Because that's how much we believe in this product. And that should be your stance too, okay? And, and realize that if you take product back, typically the supply houses will credit you back that uh, too. So, um, but stand behind your product because these companies stand behind you, okay? But so it starts during the, the service, absolutely, uh, during the consultation. Anytime I introduce product or I'm about to use product on them, you should know the product inside now. You should... Uh, uh, get on the website. These companies have spent a lot of money in research and development, some of them millions of dollars in research and development. The ingredients and, the, and all that uh, is top notch. Uh, these products have good smells to them they, and they work. Uh, when 
people are using product and they smell that smell, whether they realize it or not, you are in the, their mind. Okay, you're the you come to you come to mind at, at some level for them. So, um, but how we recommend it is. We, we, just, we have it in our mindset that I am going to retail product every single day. Okay, this, this, this is part of the how. Okay? So when I have a client, I don't care who it is. I don't, you don't get a judge. You don't get to say, this client can't afford the product. Oh, this is my aunt. Oh, this is you know, whatever uh, the situation might be. You don't get to decide, am I going to retail product to this client or not? It's, it could be your mom. You're still going to go through the steps every single time. So, so your mindset is... Uh, how, how you retail product is having the mindset of I am going to retail product today. Okay, then during the, the consultation, during the introduction of product, and at the end part, you need to be uh, talking to them about the product and making recommendations. These are the products I used on you today. I recommend you purchase them. And then just don't care if they buy it. Great. If they don't, great. Okay. Sometimes they're uh, between a point, uh, paychecks and maybe they can't afford it right then. But, uh, and sometimes it's going to take a few uh, instances of you talking to them about the product before they'll buy it. But when you look at a service and then what retail means to that service, I mean, it's, it, it ultimately becomes a big part of your income. Uh, I've had a graduate who was working at a, a Walmart Smart Style, okay? which um, is a great place for, I think, for uh, hairstylists to start. Uh, but, it, you know, in her case, they loved her. Uh, she sold $3,500 in retail in one month. Okay, so in, in the real world, $3,500 in, in uh, almost net profit is about $1,750. Okay, $1,750 that, that um, would be going to your bottom line if you were a booth renter. Uh, in a commission uh, scenario, they're going to pay you a small percentage of that. But at, at the end of the day, the fact that she can retail is a big win. Now, the money is secondary to the client's needs. So, so these are kind of how I do it is I do it with the mindset, number one, of today I'm going to retail product. Secondly, every time that I do a consultation, I'm going to talk about some sort of product that the client needs as I look at their needs. Third, when I bring that product in, I'm going to reiterate, hey, this is the product I'm using on you today, and this is why, and then at the end, I'm going to make a recommendation that you buy it, okay? Why I buy it, it's not about making money. Money is secondary, okay? It is a byproduct of meeting the need of the client. So why I retail is that I believe in this product so much that every single client needs to have this product, and if they don't have it, then they're not going to see the results that, that I want them to see and that they want to see, okay? So why I'm rebooking, or excuse me, my mind's on rebooking because it's the number one most important business step you're ever going to do, right? If I pounded that dead horse a little bit. But why I'm, I'm recommending that they purchase product comes back to the fact that they need it, absolutely need it. Their life will be better with this product. You have to believe that, okay? So I'll say that before marrying Allison, uh, I used a bar of ivory soap to wash my hair and my body. Okay? I didn't know better. I was stupid. Guys are stupid, right? We need someone to explain things to us. So I always had an itchy back. Always. And I just felt like, well, you know, you got an itchy back. So that's just life. Then Mary Allison, and all of a sudden I'm using this Aveda shampoo, and, I, and, it, and I'm using way too much because Aveda shampoos don't typically lather overly a lot, you know? And so I'm like using half a bottle, and she's like yelling at me, and I didn't realize it was like liquid gold or, you know, or anything, but... Uh, but all of a sudden, I went from an itchy back to not having an itchy back. So from that point, 21 years, basically, I went with an itchy back. And now I don't experience that because I use professional products. Okay, so clients need professional products. They make a difference, and you need to believe that. Yeah. I, I've used Pantene uh, my entire life, like, okay. and I'm 30. Yeah. And then Aaron did my hair, and I switched over to Kevin Murphy, and I'm in love with it. Yeah. So, and now, in Pantene, when you said that, just so you know, all the Cosmo kids in the room were, <gasps> yeah, look at me, I see yeah, you. yeah, they're judging you. <laughs> Angela. <laughs> I had pretty hair. Yeah. It's all silicone, I know. Yeah. So, and what is it now about, because Kevin Murphy, even at your cost, is still a, a, an it's investment. Horrible, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what, what, what about it do you love better, though? Um, my hair, it just, it, it's so much healthier. Yeah. And it smells amazing. 
amazing. Yeah. It feels amazing. I mean, the, the whole skincare for your hair thing, it, yeah. So. Yeah. And so, and now you're bought in, right? Mm -hmm. And now, as an esthetician, I'm going to highly, highly recommend that you carry Kevin Murphy yourself, you know, as you get out in the real world. Because, oh, absolutely, because your hair touches your skin. Anyway. Yep, yep. And, and skin girls, if you're in a commission salon, they're going to have all these products for you. If you're in a booth rent situation, you need to carry skincare line uh, products too. Because our industry is failing miserably at retailing product. We, we are. When you look at, uh, I still need to get 2017 numbers, but 2016, it was $52 billion in retail was done in, in, uh, the, from the beauty lines. Okay, that's talking specifically about Schwarzkopf, that's talking about Aveda, that's talking about uh, Paul Mitchell, uh, L'Oreal products. It was totaled up to 54 or $52 billion. And our industry uh, captured about $4.5 billion of it meaning that there's a whole bunch of sales happening uh, that are bypassing us. Uh, Ulta is just crushing it. They're just, they're doing great. Good for Ulta, bad for us, just so you know. And again, that's me t calling Ulta the evil empire. And, and it's not that they're the evil empire, but they came in to fill the void that's, that's, that we're creating. We're never gonna capture all 50 plus billion dollars, but we need to do a better job, we because that's like seven percent of all retails being done by professionals. We need to be closer to fifteen to twenty percent. And so, the uh, the reason I guess I'm hashing this a little bit is estheticians don't be afraid to carry, Kevy, carry Kevin Murphy if that's the product line you believe in, or whatever product line you believe in. And and Cosmo Kids and Nail Kids, same thing. You should be carrying hair care and skin care. Uh, honestly, nails. I mean, what the heck are you going to sell if you don't sell those? Because you, you sell someone nail polish, they'll be back in 12 years to buy another bottle of nail polish, right? <laughs> uh, so you need these consumables that are a 30 to 40 day cycle, because that's 30 to 40 every 30 to 40 days. Then my money's turning over, okay, and that which is which is good. So uh, anyway, I, and now I'm really maybe off topic a little bit, but hopefully it's educating you a little bit more about not being afraid to retail, because I see that in our industry, we're just so afraid to ask for that sale. Oh, my client can't afford it. That's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to say whether you are rich or poor, your hair needs Kevin Murphy. Whether you are rich or poor, your skin needs Fetamir. Okay? I don't care about your social economic standing. I care about you. Then they can make the decision from there. So, anyway, uh, it's again, I, I love this industry. What we do is so powerful. We make people feel better about themselves. These products are a big part of that. So let's make sure that when you graduate, and you're in a booth rent situation or a salon suite situation, which most of you are going to be in, that you have product. And I don't care that you carry the whole line. I just care that you carry certain parts of the line at first that you believe in and that you recommend uh, to your clients and that you yourself are using. So, okay. Um, add-on services. So how do we uh, do an add-on service? And, and an add-on service is not retail. Okay, I want to emphasize that. That retail dollars and add-on services are two different things. What an add-on service represents is that when the client was with you, they came in for the, the reason that they came in for, for whatever they scheduled. But you as a professional looked at their needs and make, made a recommendation on an additional service that they need. Not that you need them to take up, you up on, but that they themselves need. If you always have the need of the client as your focus, the money will take care of itself. Trust me. Okay. So how do we then, when we have a client come in, how do we, uh, where, how does this start? How do we do a, a, an add-on service? The consultation. Okay. Right there. And yeah. They say, I want a blonde balayage. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm going to add old plus in it. It's, a little, it's extra. I was like, but it's going to save your hair. Yeah. So where can it go through? Okay. So you as the professional <laughs> are going to make a recommendation if someone's getting their hair colored to add the, the extra Olaplex, and I don't even know what that is, but it's something that you put it in the color that helps with the, the health of the hair, okay? And is that selling them snake oil? No. No. You believe in it? Yeah. 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 And so anyway, that, th these are the things I want to emphasize is that first off, how we do it is we, okay, they came in for this service and they need this extra, right? And during the consultation, I'm looking at what they're getting done and I'm making a recommendation, okay? And that's all, that's all it is. Um, any, anything else, anybody else want to add to that, Angela? Um, I had a woman that came in and just through conversation of her primary service, added on to other services. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah. Because you saw a need for those services, right? And, and how was her experience? She came back the next week. Yeah. Because this is the thing. It's all about the need of the client. Without doing those services, it's not to say that she wouldn't come back. Mm -hmm. But she isn't getting everything she needs. And just like uh, when Steve Jobs uh, made an iPhone. Did we really ever realize that we needed a phone to take picture of our food and post it and to shoot video and to listen to music? We didn't know. And now, can you live with that? Who in here has a flip phone? Raise your hand, because I admire you, first off, for sticking to old Amazing technology. Yeah. Oh, she's gone. So, yeah. yeah, so flip phones are cool, right? Uh, but raise your hand if you don't have a smartphone in here. Not, and I'm not judging you, I just want to see. So there's a room full of people and everyone has a smartphone. Wow, isn't that? Steve Jobs knew what we needed before we knew what we needed. And so the reason that I share that is the same thing is for your clients. You know what they need more than they know what they need. And by making that recommendation on these additional services, then they're going to have a better experience and they're getting what they need. And because they're getting what they need and you're the one that provided it to them and they feel better about themselves, again, how powerful is our industry? That's our job. I want you to feel better about yourself. They're tied to you, okay? Because who, other than Aaron, who's ever going to do your hair? Yeah, other than me. Maybe Trish. I yeah, it's not that. Try. Yeah, and I want to. I want to preface that by there is a whole bunch of people in this room that are and talented. So picky. Yeah, but <laughs> but you can see that there's people you're going to go to, right? And, and that when that relationship is built, and these services. So, so the rebooking and the retail and the add-on services is building a stronger relationship. And again, how we do it is at the beginning of the service, during the consultation, we are going to make recommendations. We are the professional. Whether they take you up on it or not doesn't really matter. What matters is that you're looking at what they need and making a recommendation. That's what matters, okay? So if you're... Uh, Nails, I'll pick on Chandra because she won a prize today. Uh, so if someone comes in and you're doing a manicure and their hands are just wicked dry, what's something that you might want to do for them? I would recommend cuticle oil and a cuticle stick and offer to upgrade for paraffin. Paraffin and cuticle oil. So now are, they, are their hands going to start to, uh, because again, we're in a, a dry part of the season. Uh, when it goes winter time, my hands have to adjust, my skin has to adjust, but if my hands are, are painfully dry, and I start using moisturizer, which I know for a guy that sounds like, why am I using moisturizer? I don't know, I use it, but, uh, and it makes me feel better, um, or at least my hands feel better, but, uh, but by looking at the need of the client, now they're not going around with dry, cracked hands, okay? And again, whether it's aesthetics or nails or Cosmo, there are things more than what they're calling for that they need, and if, if they're, when you look at the client, if there isn't anything they need, don't make a recommendation for an additional service then. But if there's things they need, and you should be knowing your business good enough that you could say, hey, this is, I, this is what this will do for you, and this is why I recommend it. Coming back to Olaplex for <coughs> color clients, right? That, that's an additional service, like there's additional client. costs, yeah? So, why then do we do add-on services? I've kind of hit on it, but why do you think, uh, how we do it is, is during the consultation, we're going to make that recommendation. And if they take us up on it, great. If they don't, that's fine too. Why are we making these recommendations? And we've already kind of touched it's on it. Selling that. yourself yeah. higher. Why is it making you more money? Yeah. So, so we look more credible to the client when we make these recommendations. It is going to add to your bottom line. Uh, every single day, if you had a goal to make an extra $50 with add-on services, I believe that that is going to be done pretty easily. So, very nice. It's going to fit in half of their experience. Too. Yeah. I mean, like she was saying, this, I mean, the lady came back in a week. Yeah. And she knew what she was doing, but she also, her one hour hand time turned into two or three or whatever she was saying. Like, that yeah. was really nice. I think it's just think that you care about them. Because yeah. you really do, though. You care yeah. about their well being, their hair, or their skin. And they're like, she sees that I need this, so I'm going to get it. So, so it's enhancing the experience is what Burgundy's saying, just so the people who are live didn't, I don't know how well the mic picks you up. Enhancing the experience and it's uh, uh, the need of the client. We're, we're taking care of the client and making us look credible. Yeah. The more services you offer them, the more likely it is they're gonna rebook with you. Yes. Forever. Thank, thank you for saying that because statistically, so what was said is the, the more services that you can do with a client, the more likelihood they're going to rebook. Rebooking again is the most important business step you'll ever do. 
it's statistically said that if you can do three things with a client, there's an 80% chance they're going to rebook with you. Okay, so, so to, to your point, uh, and I should have brought that up earlier, so thank you for reminding me though. But if I can, the service they came in for, an additional service, and sell them a product, high, high probability they're going to rebook. Okay? I mean, uh, the, the barber industry is just going through this metamorphosis right now and, and, it, and, and resurgence, uh, but we're going to see a bigger change. But guys are starting to care more about how they look, and they want to go in and get that look done regularly, and, which is... It's not that guys didn't care about how they looked before, but even more so. And so that's, barbers are taking advantage of that. Cosmetologists are taking advantage of that. Honestly, estheticians are getting uh, some of that business. Uh, guys are getting more manicures and pedicures than ever before. And, and so it is. It's, it's as you have these relationships and build these relationships, and when you have them in your chair, you need to make that, these recommendations on these extra services because it builds a better, why we do it is it builds a better relationship. It makes us look more credible adds a little bit of extra money into our pocket, okay? Um, so, great, thank you. Um, referrals. So we are an industry that will, uh, that really, uh, uh, our growth depends on referrals, how quickly we grow. Uh, it is a phenomenal, uh, the, the social media helps the beauty professionals at such a, a, an amazing uh, level right now. Uh, when our graduates 10 years ago were going out into the real world, it was taking the top people about a year to a year and a half to get where they were pretty consistently busy. What we're seeing now is kids are doing that in six months. And a big part of that is uh, Snapchat, and which I don't understand, and Facebook and Instagram. So people are able to see your work, okay, which uh, before, 10 years ago, we didn't have Facebook. It was starting to come on the scene. Maybe we did. I don't know. But, but, uh, but we didn't know how to use it. I, I look at, does anyone ever see like old posts that you did like however many years ago? I'm starting to see them and it's like, oh my gosh, that's so uh, whatever. I don't know. Uh, obviously, I didn't understand it. And I still don't understand it. But, uh, but it's an exciting time to be in this industry. Getting referrals, it's not that it's easier, but if we are consistent and on our social media, and asking clients for help, we are growing our business at, uh, uh, at such a, uh, a stronger pace than ever before. So exciting time for you as you're graduating school and going out there. Also a little scary, is that fair? I mean, because again, I'm sending you out into the real world knowing that 94% of you have to be booth renters probably. I mean, that's, it, that scares me to death. Now, I'm seeing graduates go out and make it work, so I, I believe you can do it. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's referrals is where you're going to build your business and, and figuring out, okay, how do I ask for a referral? So, so how do you do that? How do you, how do you ask for a referral? Offer them something in return. Okay. So having a reward program. So the, the statement is offering them something in return. I think it's, it's a combination of that. I think it's also um, letting them know, hey, I'm trying to build my business. Will you please help me? Uh, and people want to help you um, and and then coming full circle back to what you're saying is and every time someone comes in again I believe it's every time that they refer someone to you that you should give them something and that's uh, credit in services okay so if you give them twenty dollars in services that's not really twenty dollars but I mean there is cost involved but it's significantly less than twenty dollars uh, then it makes them more likely to refer people to you Realize that uh, a client represents a certain dollar amount per year, and on average, it's somewhere between eight hundred to twelve hundred dollars in revenue. Okay, depending on what your niche is. I'll caution you to say, don't look at your clients as money; look at them as people. And again, the money will take care of itself. But you also need to be aware of that. And as you get out and you're working, you need to put paper to pencil and say, on average, a client spends this much time with me, and if I see them this many times during a year, this is how much money. I stand to make on my clients. So every time somebody gives you a new client, that's really what they're giving you. And again, I believe it's going to be somewhere between $800 to $1,200 in revenue, okay, which is a significant number. So because they're giving you that, and you now have to maintain that relationship for the year, but if you do, they're, they're really giving you that money, I believe giving them something every single time they give you that opportunity is, uh, is really something that you should consider. 
Okay. So how I ask for referrals, I, I believe that this could be done during the consultation. Uh, it could be, wow, I really like look, working on you. I mean, I, I sound terrible. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm not the best person to, uh, to get advice on uh, how, to, how to do it other than because I'll never be behind the chair or work on a client, which is a good thing. Uh, but I, I think it is, hey, you know, I appreciate you as a client and I'm building my business and, I, and, uh, and, we're gonna, and I'm going to give you some referral cards at the end and I really would like your help in building a business. And then I can just go about my day and or about the service. And at the end, now I'm going to come back to that and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to give you these three business cards and on here is your name and there's an expiration date right here. So if you hand these cards out and a guest comes in with, within this time frame, I'm going to give you $20 in credit. I mean, this is an example, okay? You don't have to do it. But, uh, so basically I'm giving you three cards, so that could be $60 in credit towards services. Uh, if, they, if they care about you and want to help you, they're gonna hand those cards out, okay? Um, why we ask for referrals? In the real world, if you don't have an appointment and you get a walk-in client, hey, I'll take it, right? That's, that's business for me in that moment. But realize walk-in traffic that person walked in somewhere else the time before. And you got them, it's kind of like the, they're the Russian roulette clients of the, of the beauty space. So uh, it, it, it's, it's not that you can't retain them as a client, but that's kind of their habit. They like convenience and, and they're, they're like 7-Eleven or Maverick or whatever your convenience store is, right? They're that type of customer. Uh, again, you can, you, can, you can build the relationship and get them back, but a referral, and this is why we ask for referrals. Referrals are people that are choosing you specifically. So somebody recommended them, or they saw your work on social media, or you ran into them and gave them a business card, whatever created the referral, because I believe that you get to recreate, uh, create referrals also. Uh, but we do love it when our clients are referring people into us. But um, why we ask for referrals is it's better uh, clients. It's a higher probability that they're going to stick. Okay, so when they come in, I get the, here I am making my first impression. I'm doing a good job on my consultation. I'm, I'm recommending additional services. I'm recommending product. I'm trying to rebook them. Uh, and so, the, again, this, this becomes a person that has chosen you. So with higher probability, they're going to remain with you. And, and your business is built on retention. It is so critical to get your clients back in. Uh, Allowing them to go to not to leave without uh, scheduling another appointment uh, is is scary, quite honestly, uh, because a, a lot of times if they haven't scheduled that appointment when they need that appointment, they need that appointment that day, and if you're booked, then they're going to go someplace else, and we see that happen. So uh, why we ask for referrals is it's it's a better uh, probability that we're going to retain that client, okay, um, and this is one that that you need to look at where your new business comes from each month. So if you, like your existing clients that you've done before, we, we still wanna track them, but a brand new client, where did it come from? Did it come from walk-in business or did it come from a client that referred them into me? I would even go so far as to say when you get a client refer someone to you, that you should text that client or call that client and thank them and let them know, hey, I got your credit here if, if that's what you choose to do in terms of a reward system. So. All right, so, uh, and then reward the client. So how you do it is uh, up to you. Um, there, uh, I, I've shared, there was a woman that, uh, and I forget her name, but she was from Australia, awesome accent. Anyway, uh, she talked about how she built her, her um, empire. And when she refers people, she gives them $90 in credit for every referral that, comes in from that person. So she gives every single client three cards and that's $90 per client. That's $270 in credit that she's willing to give for three new clients. She does put an expiration date, so she gives them, I think it was three weeks. So within three weeks, if the client refers someone in, then they get that $90. If it happens after the three weeks, then she doesn't give them the $90 because she wants the business right then. Uh, now, if it was a day after, I mean, those are things you'd have to consider, but, uh, but how we reward the client, you need to come up with your own system. Uh, it, do you think $90 is a little high in a credit? In this area, yeah. Yeah, in this area, possibly, right? 
So, uh, it, but uh, I definitely would get people's attention. So I'm not saying what she is, is telling us is wrong, but um, I think you can get the same reaction, uh, and it's not me trying to be cheap, but it is me saying, wow, uh, I could probably get the same reaction on 20 to 25 to 30 dollars and, and get, get the same call to action. But those are things that, that you'll have to figure out for yourself. Uh, I see way too often uh, punch cards that get created where if you refer four people to me or if you refer 10 people to me, then I give you a free service. Uh, realize again, if, if, if you're asking the client to refer four new people to me and then I'm going to give you a service, you're saying give me uh, 32 to $9,600 in revenue and then I'm gonna give you a free service. That's what you're saying. And, and that's being greedy, okay? So uh, I, I think, in my opinion, that in uh, rewarding the client, how we do it is we come up with a system. Of when I get a new client in, I'll give them $10 off maybe or whatever that's going to be. And then I'm gonna give you $20 or whatever that's going to be. So you're giving the person, the first client, their first experience, you're giving them a small discount and the person that's referring them in, you're giving them a discount or credit, okay? Uh, why we are rewarding the client? I just think that it's good manners. I just think it's good business sense. I think it, that the whole reciprocation mentality, and Barbara, jump in here because I know you have a philosophy on this in terms of, and maybe instead of me just saying it, maybe you can, can chime in on it. And then you're kind of, you feel like you are, you owe them something. And that's how it works with your clients, too. It's our human nature, our society um, believes in that. That's how we're raised. Yeah. And so if you do give something to your client, they feel like they kind of owe you something back. Yeah. And I'll say that in this journey that you're going to go on, um, look for opportunities to give your services to a way in certain situations. Because if you go out, uh, I know, and I don't know that we've done it uh, this uh, school year yet, but there's a, there is a school that we've gone in before and done free haircuts for, for the kids in that school. And we target that school specifically because the kids in that school, uh, their, their parents struggle financially. And, and we've gone in and the student body's done a great job of, of doing that. And they cut the mom's hair, the sibling's hair. I mean. We've gone in on, on one night and done over 150 haircuts before. And, and that's impacting people's lives. Uh, and I don't look for any pat on the back, but the only reason I share that is, is because you should look for opportunities to give back in addition to. Because I think as you do that, that it's going to return back to you in, in business. And we have had uh, people sign up for our school, and I wasn't there for that, that purpose. I was there to serve the needs of children who otherwise couldn't afford, their parents couldn't afford a haircut. And, and, but uh, from that, people see that and they, they identify with that and we've, we've had students sign up because of it. Uh, but it, it, on the business side of it, I think when you do give something to somebody that, like what Barbara's saying, that they then want to give you something in return and they wanna see you successful. Your clients wanna see you successful. So uh, rewarding your client, that's your system, however you're gonna put it together. But I think that every time that they give you a new client, that you should reward that uh, and, and, and be grateful for that and let them know how much you appreciate it. Because if I said to you, Trish, hey, Trish, I got a new client that you referred to me. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. What, what would you want to do in return? Say thank you. Okay. Would you want to give me more clients, do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Trish has referred her friends to come to school here, uh, which I appreciate. And others have too, and, and that's, uh, that's a big deal for me. And I'll say, I'll just make a plug, as you have clients that say, hey, I told my friend to come to you, because I do this, so when Trish has referred friends to me, I always say, hey, I wanna meet your friend, how do we make that happen? Uh, ask them if it's okay to give me your number. Oh, Burgundy, right, your friend. Uh, that's what I asked you first. I said, hey, check with your friend, and then give me your number, and then I'll contact her. And I've done the same with Trish. Um, so it, when people tell you, hey, I've, 
giving your card out to my friends, thank them for that, but then take it to the next level, which is how do I meet your friend? I want to talk to your friend, right? I want to see what their needs are. So don't just wait back uh, and wait and, and hope that the business comes in. Take the next step, which the next step is, okay, how do we have a conversation? Either a group text or ask them if I can call them or whatever. So be willing in this reward system to be aggressive in finding new clients because your clients want to help you. And, and it's once they say, yeah, I handed my cards out to my friend who loved my hair, well, you need to then try and make that introduction. Okay, So be brave on that because some people, it's like, I don't know, we're so great in helping people, uh, that, but sometimes we're afraid to, uh, to, to be what, what we might view is a little aggressive. And, and I don't think it's aggressive. They've already made the, they've already had a conversation with a friend. Now you just need the introduction. Okay. So for me, it's very important for you to know not just the services that you provide, but on the business side, know how I do certain business steps and why I do them. So the business steps that, that I think are uh, critical, read book being the most important business step that you'll ever do. If I work with you as a consultant, that's going to be the first area that we work on. And we don't have to get to 60%, but that's going to be the goal. Uh, I'll say that the shop that I worked with that did get to 60%, Almost well, they, they more than doubled their income. Now during that time, they also raised their prices, which helped a little bit. Uh, but they're they are booked out um, uh, three, four, even five weeks at a, uh, at times. But at least three weeks, uh, it's hard to get in into them. Um, uh, so how we rebook is we let the client know uh, that for them to look as good as they want to look, that you need to see them back in a certain amount of time. Why we rebook is the client looks better by being on a maintenance program. And it, it, the byproduct of it is that you're going to make more money and need to manage fewer people. Um, retail, how we do it is it, during the consultation or during any time that we introduce product to them, we educate them on the product. Why we retail is the client needs the product to have a better experience and to get the results they're looking for. And a byproduct is that we're going to make more money. Okay, um, add-on services. We're the professional, so how do we do it? During the consultation or during the service, we're going to look at the need of the client and, and educate them on the additional services that they need. Why we do it is the client will have a better experience, and by having a better experience, all these things start to be synergetic, and they start to rebook, and they start to buy product from us. And you're the professional. You need to make the recommendation on, hey, you need this additional service. Um, Referrals, how we do it, we just ask the client, hey, I need your help, will you please help me? Why we do it is it's a better client. Uh, statistically, we have a greater probability of keeping that person. And then on your reward system, you need to come up with, with that, but how you do it is up to you. I believe that you should offer a reward system that uh, benefits the person coming in for the first time and benefits the person that referred the person into you. Uh, why we reward it is it's showing gratitude back to our client, and I think that if the world had more people that were showing gratitude, that we would have better results uh, uh, in our political arena, in our, our, you know, I mean, there's just so many things that if people showed gratitude all day, that we would start to eliminate hate, I believe. And so it's just your opportunity to build better relationships in terms of why we reward the client is I care about them and they care about me and they, they're referring people into me and helping me, so I'm gonna give them something in return. Um, again, realize that you are in just an amazing, amazing industry, and what you do saves lives, it really does. Uh, and you uh, have the ability to be impactful in their self-image and how others judge them, and, and I, I love the fact that you're passionate about it, and let's just keep you moving forward and get you out graduated and get you out working.